the challenge to grow in God. Amen. And God is getting ready to do something new. And I'm telling each and every one of you here under the sound of my voice that God wants to use you Amen. in this service. Not in his service, in this service at 2920 Wayne. But you got to be willing and obedient and you can't be afraid. Let him use you. All the disciples, the Bible said, were ignorant and unlearned. But Jesus stayed with them three years. They put his spirit on them. And they were ready to go out and minister the word of God. But I want to challenge you, this is lesson number two, to grow in the Lord. It's time for us to start growing in the Lord. We've been in church long enough. It's time for us to grow. God wants to mature you right where you are. He wants to use you right where you are. And Jesus is a strict master when it comes down to teaching the word of God. I like to be on the people that's strict. And he expects for you to produce. He's just like that football coach. You know anything about a coach? Coach don't play. He's going to try to get the best out of him. And once he see you ain't got it, he's going to put you on the bench. And God don't want to put his children on the bench. But if we don't grow, we give them no choice. Jesus said, I would that you were hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. No, that's right. Nobody, you won't eat enough. Somebody said, well, I was going, I know you was getting off work, and so I was cooking you something, but the steak was almost ready. It ain't ready, but since you're here, I'm going to go ahead and let you have it half done. Uh -huh. Jesus said, when you're lukewarm, see, at least, at least lukewarm is a, is a, it, it means you on your way to being hot, but it, you ain't hot enough. When you look warm, you, you know you gotta be warm before you get hot. But Jesus said, I want you to be hot or cold. I don't want you in the middle trying to decide. I need to know where you stand. That's right. So I'm challenging you to grow. And I'm not gonna give the scripture, but I'm gonna mention a few things that I said in lesson number one. We talked about the man that had the vineyard, it had the fig tree. In three years, the owner of the vineyard came by. The garden of seed was in the figs on the tree in Luke chapter 13. You can just read the whole chapter from work. And for three years he came by and found no figs on the tree. He asked the owner of the vineyard, well, why are you keeping this tree? It's not producing. You know how something like what we do. We got clothes in the closet that we can't fit no more. Or it just used to be my you know, my famous dress. Or the on, the mark are eating it up. It ain't good for them. Give it away. Right. Why are you holding on to it? That's right. And that's how we do. We come to church. We ain't going to grow. We ain't going to teach the Sunday school. We ain't going to lead the prayer. We, no, I'm, I'm challenging you to get up from that level Amen. and go to the next level. Amen. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, right. And we know enough because let somebody quote something wrong. We'll report it to them. So we know the word, right. oh, yeah. but we want to we, we want to use the word on each other. Yeah, we're gonna start here, we're gonna practice it, but we're gonna grow and we're gonna go out into that world. But we can't go till we ready. Yes, you know enough. If you've been in church over three years, you know I don't care. If I'm gonna even go. I'm so desperate, even hitting and missing for three years, you still know enough. <laughs> but if you've been coming every Sunday, then you above ready. If you've been at least in church three years, you ready. You just need to get on somebody that's gonna push you now. Ain't gonna just let you get by. Cause sometimes people worry more about your wallet than your salvation. Don't say that, Rev. Don't say that. Long as you get in there, all right with that. I ain't worried about your money. I want your heart. Cause if I get your heart, I'm gonna get everything connected to your heart. Huh? And that's why God wants your soul. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be what added to you. That's why you don't have to pray for no money. You don't have to pray for nothing. God knows what you need. Your Heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. But what you need is a right relationship with Him. And everything you need, He's going to give it to you. And sometimes He'll give you what you want. Yes. Even though He you knows you don't need it. Yes. Yes. I've just been believing God. I just I just pray. Uh, I just, you know, a lot of people sing or not, and they just pray. Listen, do not pray shotgun prayers. A shotgun prayer, you just say, God, whatever you want to do, do it. No, be specific in your prayer. That's right. 
I want a man that's in church, Lord. Just get, as long as he's a church going man. You don't know what you're saying. All right. You should say, I want a man that loves you, Lord, more than I love you. Yes. And if he gives that you love me, you're going to get my what? Commandments if you love me. Yes. But you just said you want a church going man. That's all you see. Wow. You know what kind of men in the church? All kind of men. Godly yeah. men, devilish men, gay men. Oh. All kind of men in the church. You say, Lord, I just want a woman that go to church. That's all you say. Lord, I say, okay. She may be a hoe. Because some women go to church just to see if they get the pastor. Oh, come on now. Y'all don't want me to tell the truth. Some women go to church just to pass out so the men can catch it because she's lonely at home. Some hands on is better than no hands. So I'm going to fall out at the church. Don't come here looking at me. Don't come here to fall out. Unless you're really in the spirit. Come here to fall out. Because if you fall by me, I'm going to let you eat your head. Don't come here to hunt. Come here to praise. Don't come here to hunt. There's many places out there to hunt. I want to challenge you, listen, to grow in God. Three years the man said, I came by this big tree and got nothing. Why are you keeping it? This is what Jesus was using, the illustration to teach his disciples. If the tree is not producing, cut it down. How many of y'all agree that the tree should be cut down? Amen. Well, he said the same thing about us. He said, I'm the vine, you the branch. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, a good place to start is three. Now, we know God is a God of patience. Sometimes he'll wait a lifetime for some of us. But he won't do that with everybody. Favor ain't fair. Some people, he might say, you know, I'm going to put up with this for 10, 20 years. Some people, three months. Because he know your potential. He know your capabilities. See, that's the part I can't see. I can't see in your spirit, but God can. God knows you're really sincere if you're not. Because all tears ain't real tears. Some people cry because they got caught. But you know, man, we sympathetic. Anytime you see a woman cry, we want to make it right. We want to make it right, but you better make sure you're in the spirit even when they cry. Right. Women, well, you know, some men, they words are smoother than all. Right. He know what to say on a Friday night, a Saturday night. It's Monday morning you ought to be seeing what's that. Is he going to work? Is he getting right. out from there? <laughs> we get in love, ain't no love. We can't love. Well, I'm talking, I'm talking to I'm talking to somebody. Somebody finna meet somebody or they not ready met them. Don't you believe the hype? Everything I say is of God. It's going to help somebody. It may not be for you, but it's for somebody in here. You finna meet somebody or you done met them and don't believe the hype. You shall know the tree by the what? Fruit it bad. If the fruit corrupt, he corrupt. If he lied, this ain't gonna tax you, then tax you. He lied. I don't care if it's about a tax. It's a lie. A lie's a lie. Jesus said, He that's unfaithful in that which is least is unfaithful in that which is much. If he lied about a tax, he'll lie about a bill. Uh -huh. Oh, baby, I'm gonna pay it for you. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna get my check. I'm gonna pay it. Ain't gonna pay it. He didn't tax you back when he said it was. See, I don't let nobody get by that. I wanna be in my circle. If you lie, you lie. A lie is a lie. I don't care what you're lying about. It's a lie. And if you lie about that, you will lie about this. You may, you may lower your standard, but Jesus didn't lower his standard. And I'm not lowering mine. He called them lies that they lie. What makes you a lie is that you keep lying. We're making excuses for people. Stop it. You lie, you lie. I ain't making you lie. Yeah. See, Jesus, that, that means when you let people do you like that in the body of Christ, you're not growing. Because you can't tell what's right and you can't tell what's wrong. Yes. So I'm challenging you to grow. Growing in Lord is more than just coming to church and giving an offer. That's a good place to start. But it means that when I leave here, I'm a representation of Christ in the world. And whatever Jesus would do, you should be doing it because you're his offspring. He said this tree ain't got nothing. Three years. 
I came by seeking food. I got no food on. Cut it down. Why? It's taking up the ground. And I want to challenge you to grow in the Lord. Some of us have been in the body of Christ long enough. And God is challenging us to begin to bear some fruit in our life. Who have you brought to Christ? Not how, who have you brought to church? Since you got saved. It's amazing. We'll go to a restaurant and tell people about, oh, you ought to go over there. They got some pecan pie child that's better than big mamas. We'll tell them about the pecan pie. <laughs> but we won't tell them about what God done for us. Yeah. God said, I'm tired of it. Right. The people are perishing because my children are doing what they're supposed to do. And Jesus is not going to come back and do it again. He's depending on you and I. Yeah. But that's called me too. It's time, it's time to grow in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Paul said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, Jesus said, every year you ought to grow a little bit more than what you were last year. Every year. That's what Paul said. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look at verse 58. Help your neighbor. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The challenge to grow in God. It's time for us to grow up in the Lord. When you find, say, bless his name. Bless his name. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, go down to verse 58. First Corinthians 15, verse 58. Yes. Look what he says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That means don't be wishing wash. Persevere. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He said, always abounding. Always going higher. No matter what. God ain't worried about your circumstances at home, personal or private. You still should be growing in love. Whether you've been afflicted or not, whether you've been depressed or whatever you're going through, whatever trial may come, he still expects for you to grow. Try being nailed to a cross and you're innocent. Even on the cross, he saved the soul. This day you should be with me in what? Paradise. Even on the cross, he was growing in the bound. And we should do the same. Listen at this. Paul said we should always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Abounding in the Greek is a Greek word. It means, in the Greek, it means persail. Parasail. It means to be over and above. To be over and above? You mean little on me? Yes. To be over and above, to abound. It means to exceed or overflow. No one is too old or too young. Somebody said, but I'm on a fixed income. Abounding. I'm divorced. Abounding. I'm African American. Abounding. I live in the ghetto. Abounding. I live in revolts. Abounding. I make six figures. Abounding. I make just 10000 a year. Abounding. I'm on welfare. Abounding. No excuses. You're a child of God. You should be growing is what I'm saying. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about being on program. I'm not talking about none of that laying hands on the sick, walking on water. All that is good. But we're talking about are you growing? Because if you gr not growing, then you're malnutrition. And if you're malnutrition, you're weak. And if you're weak, you can't help nobody. That's right. That's right. That's right. What if you had a child five years old ain't grew nothing? Five years old, still the same size he or she was born. You'll go to the doctor and say, doctor, something is wrong with this baby. Mm -hmm. Why you say that, ma'am? It looked like he's just two months old. Is he sick? No, he's five years old. <laughs> He'll say, yeah, you got a problem. And that's what heaven said. I got a problem. Because they should be at least, we're not talking about preaching, singing, doing none of that usher. We're not talking about none of that in the work, in the church that's needed now. But first of all, you should be growing. You should know why you're working for the Lord. Not because the pastor asked you to work for the Lord. You should be doing it because it is a requirement from God that a hundred servants be faithful. Now whatever your calling is, that's totally different. 
but you still should be what? Growing. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Your calling is different. That's right. That's right. We should be going higher in the kingdom of the Lord, establishing a sure foundation of service, beneficial for the expansion of the gospel for all those we encounter. How you going to help somebody if you're in church and you've been in church all your life and when they're going through, you go through right with them? They depressed and you start crying right along with them. That's sad what they did. They don't know, we just go pray. No! No! Let's pray about this here. I can't go down the dumps with you. The strong are the bad and firm is of the weak, the Bible say. I am my brother's keeper. But you know what you're going to do that? Because you ain't grown. You in church, but you ain't grown. You in church, but you're not eating. And we was young, they would set the food on the table and say, this is your plate right there. That's yours, Wilbur. No, I had a choice. I could eat it or I could give it away. If I give it away, I'm going to be hungry later. And if I do that every day, I'm going to get sick because I'm not eating. God has prepared a table for us. It's up to you to sit down and eat what he prepared. We want God to do everything. I even got a ministry where I go to people's house. And preach to them bookers that won't come to church and nobody called me to come preach to them. Because they don't want Jesus. They don't want me. They don't want God. But let me say I'm selling chicken wings. I got a drive up chicken truck. <laughs> you know what? Y'all laughing, but people were seeing for some food in a minute. We care more about food than Christ. Because food what got us into this mess anyway. They ate something they weren't supposed to eat. All right. All right. All right. And the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is not of meat and drink. Don't think when you come to heaven it's going to be about eating and drink. Read Romans 14 when you get home. Don't turn that now. The kingdom of heaven is not about meat and drinking. That's what Jesus said. Paul said. But a righteous peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't think heaven is like down here. Ain't no barbecue pits in heaven. Look to your neighbors, ain't no coolers in heaven. <laughs> well, you get a barbecue pit, the cooler Negroes come from everywhere. But he warns us, when you get on reading, when you get on Romans 14, he said the kingdom of heaven is not about eating and drinking, but a righteous peace and join the Holy Ghost. If you don't want to praise now, you're going to want to praise later. You don't want to praise him. Not people. I'm going to get my prayer on when I get there. You ain't going to do nothing when you get to know him. Because you ain't doing it now. You going to do nothing when you get to know him. I don't know why these pastors try to put people in heaven at the funeral. Oh, Lying. Every funeral you go to, everybody was good. Nobody was bad. That's why I don't get called to do funerals because they, they don't know what they what that crazy joke was gonna say. I'm gonna say whatever God tells me to say. If he got killed stealing a car, the spirit might say, "Tell all the car thieves to see if you're a car thief, stop stealing because you may be landing your next." See, they gonna get you. They gonna get you. You shouldn't have said that at the funeral. You shouldn't have said that at the funeral. Well, you just gonna get your little pastor that you won't pay him to say whatever y'all pay him to say, but I ain't doing it. Save a soul, even at the funeral. Yes. Yes. Book of climbing in windows at night. I said, You climbing in windows and you got by. Stop it. Or you may end up right here today. Right. 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 If, right. if you got killed by his wife, you go across her head. I'm saying, If you hitting on your wife, this is a prime example why you need to stop hitting on your wife. Because you may be laying your next. If you're drinking and driving, yeah. and you're drinking and driving, and you got by, you need to stop. Or you may be laying and you're drinking and driving. Right. Yes. See, they're going to get mad at me. That's why they don't ever call me. I don't care. I'm going to tell them. I'm, I'm going to do what God say do. Because I don't want to get to the lamb table. And they say, wait a minute, this seat we're prepared for you. We can't find your name written in the lamp of the Lamb. Because you, you denied me when you was on earth, so I'm going to deny you now. Some people shame with Jesus. And he said, I'm gonna, that's okay. You be ashamed with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ashamed of you before my father and the angel. I'm going to wait till you get to heaven, and I'm going to act like I don't know you too. We don't want people to know we're Christians. 
We think we got a fish glued on our bumper or our car. We're a Christian. I don't know what a fish and Jesus got there, but I put him in a frying pan and fry him up. I don't know what a fish got to do with Jesus. Where they, I don't even know where that come from. See, that means you ain't been taught. Yeah. You ain't growing in love because you go with all this foolishness. That's right. That's right. I want to challenge every believer to push yourself. I'm getting ready to close. You got to push yourself mm -hmm. above your limitations in Christ. Being taught sound doctrine, watch this. Being taught sound doctrine is one of the best ways to accomplish this task. Right. And then going on and exercising our faith in what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Being taught sound doctrine is the best way to grow up in the Lord. And then going out and exercising our faith in what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Timothy says, 2 Timothy 2, 4 says, preach the word, be in season and out of season. You don't have to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. I mean, so read that when you get home. 2 Timothy chapter, for time's sake, 2 Timothy Chapter 4, verse 2 says us to preach the word in season and out of season. Preaching when they want to hear, preaching when they don't want to hear. You preaching like that, the people are going to begin to grow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But turn to Philippians 3.14. I'm showing you where you got to push yourself above and beyond. Philippians. Paul says, I press toward them all. Sometimes you got to press toward them all. Philippians. Three fourteen. When you find say blessing that. Philippians three fourteen. We should be going higher in the kingdom of the Lord. I want to challenge every believer to push yourself above your limitations. Get out of that comfort zone and push yourself. To go high in love. Philippians 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. When you finally say, Bless his name. Bless his name. Paul says, Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Right after Ephesians, then Philippians. Philippians 3. 14. Paul says, look what he says. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What do you say? I press. I press. When you're pressing something, you're not just walking. You're pressing. Something trying to hold me back. I got to yeah. press my way. Mm. What's trying to hold me back? My past. Old friends. Hennessy. <laughs> Poochie mamas, ex-boyfriends, ex-girls, whatever press, you got to press away from them. Toward the mark. Yeah. If it's a hindrance to you, then you need to press. Yes. If it's not, some people, sometimes you just got, sometimes to, to get high and go, sometimes we need to just let it go. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you might need to just get a new number. Yes. You get a new number and all your problems will go away. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just ain't gonna read it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna take it back. You ain't strong enough to that flesh. Sometimes you might just get a, need to move to a new neighborhood. Whatever you got, I don't know what you need to do. But you either need to press or learn to let it go. Yes. Let go and let go. If you do, look, you don't have to go to college to understand this, this philosophy. If you do the same thing all the time, you're going to get the same result all the time. Yes. If you want to receive something different, you're going to have to do something different. Yes. It's called change, Lord. I know I've been changed. Lord. That's why we say, I know I've been changed. Why? Because I don't do the things I used to do. If you're still doing the things you used to do and yet saying you're changed, you're only fooling yourself. Yeah, you changed. You got worse than I even denied. Right. Look at this. They're getting ready to close. If you're a new believer in the body of Christ, you need the sincere milk of the word. And that's going to be my final scripture. I'm closing this out. 
the sincere milk of the word. Milk is one of the most purest and healthiest things you can give a newborn baby. Because it's full of nutrients and they ain't got to chew it, they can just swallow it. So these terms ought to be so simple that the average individual can understand it, receive it, swallow it, manifest it, and then get to work. You don't need to be on steaks when you should be on milk. So let's look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Hebrews, James, then Peter. I say that so you can find these. Find the book of Hebrews, then James, and then Peter. That's what I used to have to do when I was first learning scripture. I said, where the book of Peter? I, I remember the book before sometime. Hebrews, James, Peter. Hebrews, okay, Peter. Hebrews, James, then Peter. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Then we're going to close. First Peter, 2, 1. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Talking about that's the stuff we used to do before we were saved. Laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisies, envy, and all evil speakings. We don't do that no more. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that they may be on program. Oh, that don't say that. <laughs> that they may grow up. Yeah. So if you're not getting the sincere milk of the word, you ain't growing. Uh -huh. So if whoever's been teaching you ain't teaching you sound doctrine, uh -huh. meaning strictly the word of God, yeah, of course I can use a little testimony with it and a little history and my experience and all that. But basically I should be teaching you every Sunday from the Bible. Amen. You should be able to take the scriptures, and go home and study them and see that what I'm saying is true and it'll further convince you. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So, so this, if I'm giving you the sincere milk of the word, then you should be growing in the body of Christ. And then when you grow, God can use you wherever he want to call you. I can't tell you what God will call you. But if you're under me and you're under this ministry, then God may confirm through me that that's what he wants you to do. But it's going to be your calling, whatever it is. But he may give me confirmation. And I may see it, but I can't tell you. And when you come, and I say, well, I know, because God already showed me. Just wait for him to tell you. See, we are connected one to another. And see, I'm closing. When I first came off the streets, and I got into the church, I thank God that a pastor that I sat under, and his son, when they put that word on you, I used to ask my wife, you told the pastor something? She said, mm hmm. I said, mm hmm. He was on it. And that's how I know, for me, that's, because that man should be saying stuff that I was either doing or just got through doing. Every Sunday, I, 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 I had a choice. I quit going there because I was uncomfortable. I could don't stay there and take the pressure and let God change me. And I stayed there. You see what happened? And I'm going to tell you how I know. Now, I'm talking from experience now. I'm going to tell you how I know it don't take that long for God to use you. I got baptized December the 15th, 1997. Now, you do the math. I preached my first sermon September the 6th, 1998. That ain't 12 months. So don't come tell me. See, I don't, I don't want to hear it. But you know what I was doing? I was strict. I forsook everything. Friends, everything. My good old weed. And they go, said, when you stop playing, I'm going to show you what I can do. Mm -hmm. December the 15th, I got baptized. Mm -hmm. September the 6th, 1998, preached my first sermon. That's not even 12 months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And somebody got saved that night, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, if you've been three years, you should be ready to be used by God. Right. If you, if you, because you could be, don't get me wrong, the devil going to things in your path, you got to overcome that and say, you know what, I'm not happy. Right. A made up mind is hard to diffuse. Get a Lord a hand clap. Right. Maybe someone here.